Well, good morning. We appreciate you all being here. Are you ready? Is 12 got everything set up? Yes, You're good to go. All right. We, uh, we appreciate you being here. There's a couple of topics that we're going to talk about today. Obviously not topics that are sexy. We're, we have ozone and air quality. I know some of you probably mistake the, um, the uh, media release we put out and thought we were going to talk about end zone or something like that. It was ozone. I apologize for the typo. Um, we're trying to dress this up as much as we can. Because it's so important to us, even though it doesn't sound sexy, it's critically important to Wichita, the money we spend, and the potential money we would spend in the future to maintain a consistent air quality in this community. And so that's why we're sh here. Brad Crisp is going to share here in a minute. April 1st marks the first official day of the ozone season. And so it's kind of critical that we cover some of the elements that we want to cover today. That season runs through October 31st. And so much of what creates the, the ozone issues and the air quality issues sometimes happen outside of the parameter that we can control. It makes those things that we can control even more critical. And so that's why we want to share some of those to you today just simply the sheer importance of the citizens trying to reduce their emissions and those things that we can control. So really today is a call to action. We want to impress upon the citizens to control those things we can control because there's so many things that are out of our ability to control and it is critically important to us with the air quality and the, and the fear of going out of attainment. The city of Wichita monitors air quality and forecast high ozone days for South Central Kansas, and I think that's important for the community to understand. We will let you know when the potential for those high ozone days are coming near so that you can be more cognizant of those things you can control. And so we'll talk about some of that, ways to control those things, carpooling, reducing energy use, simple things like filling your gas tank during different times of days. No question, non-essential open burning operations are prohibited right now, including burning trees and brush. And um, I know Brad will talk a little bit about that. So why don't I turn it over to Brad Crisp and let him share a little bit about what we're talking about today. Brad. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning, Brad Crisp, Wichita Fire Department. Um, as we have done for the last several years uh, in being good partners with uh, the state and our local uh, officials in health and environment, we are going to declare a burn ban for the month of April. We're currently under a burn ban as we speak right now because of weather conditions. April is a little different uh, because of the ozone issues uh, and the Flint Hills smoke management plan. Uh, that was based on uh, legislation that took place in, in 2011. And during the month of April, uh, we do limit burning in the city limits of Wichita, along with our partners in the county, uh, to the point where folks are not allowed to burn yard waste. They're not allowed to burn brush and limbs and trees uh, like they typically could outside in a chimney or an outdoor fire pit. Uh, those things are restricted <laughs> beginning tomorrow, Friday, April 1st, uh, through the end of April. Uh, we'll lift that ban if weather permits on May 1st. Uh, the exception to the rule uh, at this point anyway is outdoor cooking apparatus barbecue grills things of that nature people are still allowed to use uh, those kinds of things to prepare prepare meals for their homes and and those kinds of things uh, the burn restrictions do apply to the fire department we suspend our live burn training uh, during the month of april uh, and of course uh, in partnership with uh, with environmental services we play by the same rules as far as reduced idling and uh, eliminating any non-essential, non-emergency trips with our vehicles and, and those kinds of activities to uh, be good partners uh, in this effort. So any questions about the burn restrictions for April? Um, okay, so grills are okay. What mm -hmm. about like fire pits for cooking? Is that okay as well or do you frown upon that? Yeah, we frown upon the fire pit using wood and things like that during this because that does create 
uh, those gases that affect the ozone. Uh, the propane grills, uh, charcoal grills, if, if they're designed uh, grills to, to be used to cook on, that's okay. Uh, obviously, they, they have spark arresters in place and, and those kinds of things from a fire safety perspective. But if you just have a pit in your backyard and you're piling it up full of wood and you're doing hot dogs, we're going to frown upon that. Let, we have bring, Bailey for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's bring up um, our expert for that specific question and let her share um, in two minutes. I understand she could share all of her wisdom, but Bailey. No, I'm kidding. She is the resident expert on air quality and ozone, and, and we're going to let you field that. Sure. Sure. The reason why ozone is so important for this area is because we are trying to maintain compliance with the national ambient air quality standards. If we were to go out of compliance or be designated non-attainment, it would cost the city um, tens of millions of dollars. It could be anything from having a specific gasoline during the summer that we would be, that we'd be required to purchase rather than just our regular unleaded gas, um, all the way to things like annual vehicle inspections. Um, and that cost to the city would be immense to have to do a vehicle inspection program. And, and we as citizens don't want to have a vehicle inspection program or spe specified gas or anything like that either. So uh, in addition to the financial costs, um, ozone also has a number of health effects. So to keep our community breathing clean air, we want to make sure that um, we reduce emissions. Just curious, how did the fires last week? The fires didn't have a great effect on our ozone levels. We did see one hour spikes in ozone, but our eight hour ozone um, average did not exceed what the National Ambient Air Quality Standard requires. Um, and the air was still satisfactory for the community. Can you clarify what you mean by ozone? Ozone is uh, ground level ozone. So NOx and VOCs, these are emissions that come from chemical plants, gasoline, um, gas vapors at the pump, your cars driving around. They mix in sunlight and create ozone. So it's it's just a, it's another air chemical pollution. And I just want to just a brief reminder that um, it's not just citizens, us as individuals that can make big differences. We can make big differences as individuals. But if you're a business or an organization, a non a nonprofit or um, just a local organization, I would encourage you to reach out to me and we can put together an ozone action plan. This is a plan that incorporates projects and strategies that um, can help your business or organization decrease emissions as well. So um, every, every little bit helps. Thanks. Bailey, thank you. Mm -hmm. Another question? What, what can individuals do? Maybe you're asking them to help on a, especially a high case. Sure. If we were to administer an ozone alert, which would let um, the community know that the following day is an ozone alert day. Individuals can fuel at the pump after 6 p.m. or even better after dark. They can um, suspend mowing, painting, any use of solvents or chemicals um, further in the future and not do those activities on an ozone alert day. They can pack their lunch, carpool with a friend to work, um, reduce trips in their vehicles, absolutely not idle, so don't go to a drive-through, um, trying to do any errands, any pharmacy runs or runs to the bank um, later in the day so that they don't affect um, ozone during that day. Sure, it's Bailey Cunningham, B-A-Y-L-E-E, -E, and I am an air quality specialist with the city of Wichita. Thank you. Thank you, Bailey. Our next topic that I would like to visit with you a little bit about, again, I have a guest with me today that is going to explain some of it, but it's really good news. I want to talk about the Aviation Museum. And um, 
probably has received uh, some negative press for all of the wrong reasons. We've made some significant investments out there. The Aviation Museum is truly a treasure in our community. It now has um, a building capable of housing, you know, a worthwhile air capital of Wichita Aviation Museum pieces. And it's a, it's a wonderful place to, that we're finding visitors truly enjoy capturing some of the history of our aviation here in Wichita. And so to share just a few words, Richard Moore, who is the chairman of the board of the Aviation Museum, is with us today. Richard, you want to share a little bit? Thank you very much. This is a wonderful opportunity for um, myself, Richard Moore, the, uh, the chairman of the Kansas Aviation Museum, to be able to uh, talk in a very positive light about this wonderful agreement that the city council city manager Bob Layton, um, the mayor have, and the city arts team has come to um, provide the Aviation Museum a little extra time to pay back our portion of the, the balance of the capital improvement program that has taken place. It has allowed the museum to become ADA compliant. We have new uh, uh, restrooms, we have new electricity throughout the building, new heating and air that we're very, very excited about. And it's making the museum a fabulous place um, and a wonderful, important entity for Wichita and all of our visitors um, to, come and, to come and visit. One of the uh, very exciting things to announce that with this extended payment program that the city is allowing um, the museum to to uh, enjoy is that we have hired uh, Mr. and Mrs. Judy and Phil Frick as our consultant team um, to work with the Kansas Aviation Museum uh, to help build a better business plan, to work directly, um, to build a better and more active uh, board of directors, which is very, very important to, to our um, to our, the success of our business. Um, we just want to just thank again the city for giving us this opportunity. I have lots to say and very little time, so I'm just going to cut it off right there, and I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have or whenever you'd like me to take them. Sure. Question? Well, the terms of the extension plan, which are very, very um, welcoming to us, um, if we follow the guidelines that the city manager has laid out with, um, in concert with us, we are looking at have, needing to pay the balance back by 2020, February 1st of 2020. So it will be a three-year extension, which helps us tremendously. Because we are in the process, we're in the interviewing process, um, of our first round of interviews with our uh, new executive director position. We're getting very close to coming off of our winter hours um, and, oh, and be, uh, opening up for our spring and summer hours, our full-time normal hours. What is the balance? The balance that we owe is just around $180,000 of a $600,000 um, agreement, our portion of the agreement, so we've already paid $500,000 of it. And again, this is a city-owned building, and so the Kansas Aviation Museum, this is our portion that goes into, this is our responsibility. So when will the first one be? That is something that needs to be uh, nego uh, figured out, determined. We had at least 70, 75, and we narrowed it down to about 15, and we have held about eight of those first round interviews with some very wonderful candidates from here, from Wichita. None from outside of Wichita? Oh, there are a couple. There are a couple. But if we can find a homegrown person, that would be fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Richard, thank you.
And, and contrary to rumors, Robert Layton did not apply. He's happy with being the city manager. All right. Anything else? Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it, George. It's good to see you. We don't have to do a welfare check.